Hey guys, welcome to another video of Spencer's Garage. Today we're going to be working on my 1994 Integra GSR and we are going to be working on the brake calipers. So I have decided that I want to go ahead and refresh these OEM brake calipers. I do have some brake pad, new brake pads in there, but I decided I'm gonna go with some StopTech ones. One, the Centric ones in here just create a little too much dust for me. Let me tell you what this all entails besides changing the brake pads. I'm actually gonna take off all four calipers and I am going to also take them apart. I may not go full, you know, like taking out the cylinders and stuff like that on, on the rears, but on the fronts, I'm definitely gonna take out the cylinders. There's a, a dust boot and a seal uh, on the caliper that I'm gonna replace. Just these are original and they've never been, you know, rebuilt or anything. I know that I, I could just buy a whole new rebuild you know, a rebuilt caliper, but that's not the way I'm gonna go about this. I, I just wanna replace it with Honda OEM parts and I wanna keep the original calipers. That's just me, that's the way I'm gonna go, so that's the way I'm gonna do it in this video. So the first step is, is I need to take off the calipers. About four bolts that I need to undo, but I'm also gonna undo the brake lines. I do have some stainless steel braided brake lines in here, as you can see right there. And whenever I take those off, obviously my brake reservoir is going to lose all of its fluid. I'm not really into clamping off the brake lines and all that because, you know, I've heard that that can ruin the the innards of the, the brake hoses. And that's, in my opinion, that's just not really a good idea. That may get you by, but I'm not about doing it that way. I'm just gonna take these brake hoses off. I mean, yes, I will have to bleed the brake master cylinder, get the brake master cylinder all over again. I'll have to bleed these at all four corners, but I'm okay with that. You know, be nice, fresh brake fluid in the end. This is the way I'm gonna go about it. And if you're interested to see the whole process, stay tuned while I have the calipers off and all the parts off of them and stuff like that, all the hardware and the seals and all that, I'm gonna tape them up and I'm going to send them down just a little bit and then I am going to do some painting. I'm gonna just kind of paint these kind of like an OEM color. I'll show you that later on in the video. And then I'm also gonna do some new hardware like bleeder screws and stuff like that and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna try to go all Honda OEM parts here. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I always try to use OEM parts if it's available. Let's get started on this. Let's let's start with the fronts. I do believe that the fronts are going to be easier than the rears. So, by the way, here is a nice shot of my engine bay. Oh, it's coming together, it's coming together. But you know, with, with those crusty brakes, I'm just not happy with them. So, here we go. Here starts the brake fluid mess. Gotta hurry so it doesn't get everywhere. Here we go. Put that in there. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's already leaking everywhere. It's all coming out of the caliper. All right, so I just made a little bit of a mess on my floor, so it all came out, and then I just have the brake line draining into this funnel into this gallon jug here. So just gonna let that drain. I'm gonna wipe this up, and hopefully, that's it for the mess. Now to actually remove the caliper, I'm going to loosen all the, these four bolts first. I have one right here and one right here. I'm gonna bust those loose. And then these are 12 millimeters and then there is two of these that are actually holding it on to the, the caliper bracket. These are 17 millimeters. So I'm gonna undo the 12s, undo the 17s, and then this whole caliper should just come right off. All right, I should just be able to slide this caliper right off. Perfect. I am gonna tip it over in my rag right now because I'm sure it has some, oh yeah, definitely has some leftover brake fluid. I need to get that out. Then I just need to remove the 17 millimeter bolts and I can take this whole bracket off right, the car. Guys, well, here it is. Here is the OEM front caliper on an Integra GSR taken off. This is one of the seals I'm going to be replacing and then I will remove this cylinder and there's a seal in here also that I will be replacing. So that's gonna be fun. And like I said, I am going to be cleaning these up, sanding them down, and repainting them. 
So that's very nice. Here is the bracket. I've already removed the brake pads. I'm gonna take off this hardware, take out these slide pins, remove these boots. Honda actually makes a re rebuild kit for these, which I believe comes with new boots, dust boot on this cylinder, a new seal, washers for the brake line, the brake line that hooks up right here. And I'm not sure if it comes with anything else. Maybe it comes with some grease and stuff like that. But anyways, man, where to begin? I guess I will just begin to take off this hardware and then take off the slide pins. It's just kind of trying to do this one handed. I was going to go with some centric, they're called posi quiet brake pads. And I had them on my 91 Civic and man, they just created way too much dust. They were so dusty. After I would wash my car, my, my wheels would be completely dusted orange brownish in like one to two days and I just I didn't like that so I actually switched out the brake pads to stop tech which is kind of funny because stop tech is owned by centric but it's but it's the kind of more premium more performance uh, premium brand from centric and man on my civic hardly any brake dust at all from the stop techs so before I knew that I had put the centrics on my integra so now that I know that, I'm gonna go ahead and switch it out because you know I've I have some you know special wheels that are going on this car, and well I don't want them all dusted up, so I'm switching to stop tech. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and take out these slide pins, and yeah, these are in good shape. I've I've redone these brakes uh, recently, but I just haven't done it to this extent where I'm taking out the calipers and actually you know doing a mild rebuild on them. So they're they're somewhat fresh, but. I'm gonna get them super fresh. So continue watching and go on this journey with me. Those are in good shape. Just gonna take off these boots. They come right off. Just like that. Okay, well, oh, I need to take off this little, this is actually a brand new OEM cap on the uh, bleeder valve there. And my bleeder valve isn't in terrible condition, but it is very slightly rounded off and you know I, I like my stuff super fresh so I'm gonna go ahead and order whenever I order the rebuild kit from Honda I'm also going to order a new uh, bleeder valve too so I'm just gonna take this off and unscrew it but to keep that hole plugged while I kind of sand this caliper down and you know clean up sand it down and all that I'm actually gonna leave that old one on there because you know I won't care and then once I'm ready to put them back on the car I'll put the new bleeder valve on I'm gonna turn this caliper kind of like this you can see this black spot on my rag right there that is just from this caliper sitting like this, you know, on this side for just about, I don't know, about three minutes and all that black stuff came out. The brake fluid isn't that bad, but man, there, there must have been just some flat out gunk inside this thing. So I'm going to just kind of leave it sitting like that for a little while. Looks like I need to pull out this cylinder right here. Hmm. I have seen people do it with compressed air. Like if you have an air compressor, just give it lots of air pressure and eventually pop out this this cylinder right here or this piston. Well, I don't have compressed air. So what I am going to try is actually a tire air compressor. I am going to see if this little thing has enough pressure to push that thing out. I don't know guys. What do you think? Is this gonna work or what? Let's give it a try. Oh. I forgot, I also need to put my hand or my finger over the brake <clears throat> fluid hole right there too. So let's see if this, let's see if this works. Oh, it popped off, so I'm gonna have to make sure that's really on there. There it goes. Moved a little bit. Moved a little bit. There it went. Man, I am a little surprised that works. Man. Awesome, got the cylinder out. Nice. A little dirty, but doesn't look too bad. 
All right, let's have a look in there. There's some crud in there. I'm not sure if that's going to wipe off or if that's a coating or what, but man, there's a little bit of debris in there too. You can see some dark brake fluid, so I'm definitely going to clean that up. Looks like this uh, seal is still on. It's, it's not really... Doesn't look to be damaged or anything, which is very surprising because, again, this is from 1994. Oh man. Yeah, I don't see any rips or tears. Man. Yes. Honda quality. All right. Next, you can see. Hmm. Well, I'm going to go ahead and clean up in here first, but before I move on. So, get a good look of all that grungy stuff in there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get a rag and try to clean up as much of this grungy stuff in there as I can so we can get a better look to see its condition. Okay, guys, the inside of the cylinder is not that bad except for that one part right there. You, you, I cleaned it up with a microfiber towel and on the sidewall there, it almost looks like I don't know, it's it's a little brown. I don't know if that's due to heating or maybe water in the caliper. Maybe it's the beginning of rust or something like that. It's hard to get the flashlight in here, but that's that that's basically the worst part right there on that sidewall. And looking at the cylinder, I have also wiped down the cylinder. You can see that brown spot right there too. Again, I don't I, I guess maybe there was water sitting in the in some of the brake fluid or something. Maybe that's the beginning of some rust or something. I wiped it quite a bit with the microfiber towel and it won't come off. Uh, other than that, uh, I, I don't see any pitting or anything like that. I don't see any pitting. I don't see any abnormal wear. Nothing like that. You can also see the seal right here. Now my calipers weren't leaking or anything, so I'm just doing this as like preventative maintenance. Clean the calipers up and you know, while I'm in there. So this is another seal that I am going to replace. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my pick. Okay, let's see if I can get this seal out. Oh yeah, easy. Okay, so I just got it. This just comes right out. It's not brittle or anything. I mean, honestly, these probably didn't need to be replaced anytime soon, but you know, as I said, I'm real big on preventative maintenance, so I am just going to go ahead and replace all these seals because I am getting that uh, rebuild kit, but you know, this, this seal looks to be okay. All right, guys, we are at the rear of the car now. Let me show you how to do the rears. So the rears are a little bit different than the fronts. The main difference being this. This is part of the emergency brake system. So I need to show you how to disconnect this. And there are a few other differences, but this is the first one that we are going to run into. So you can see the emergency brake cable connects to the caliper right here. Uh, there is a pin on top and then a safety pin right here. It's almost like a cotter pin, but it's not a cotter pin, but that holds that, this top one right here in place. So what I'm going to do is, is I am going to get some pliers. I'm just gonna pull out this pin right here. You just grab it and you pull straight out. Let me see if I can get this. There we go. Okay, so there it is right there. You can see that, you just grab it, Pull it right out, set this somewhere where, where you will not lose it. You do not want to lose that pen. All right, so now we need to get this guy right here out. So I'm gonna need to get a screwdriver or something or a pry bar or something to where I can just push this out so we can disconnect this cable here. Just am using a flathead screwdriver. Oh yeah, did you see how that just raised right up? Just going to wiggle this right, there we go, and it's disconnected. There's what the pin looks like right there. Again, we're gonna set that to the side, make sure you don't lose it. So now you can see that we have that disconnected from the caliper, this part right here. See how that's disconnected? Now, another thing, I want this cable fully out of the way while I'm doing this job, and I'm gonna need this disconnected from the caliper. So instead of removing it, you know, from this part right here, you know, taking out that clip and removing the cable and all that, you can actually just uh, undo these two bolts. You can see them, 
There's one on top there and then one right there. Those are both 12 millimeters. So I'm gonna get my socket and just remove those two 12 millimeters so I can just get this emergency cable out of the way. Okay guys, you can now see that that is removed from the caliper, this part right here. So that's good. Also, I, I wanted to mention that uh, most integrators will have a a shield over this like there'll be a bolt here and then there'll be a bolt down here somewhere i believe those are two 10 millimeters mine has already been removed because i have uh, worked on the brakes recently so just being just take a note of that you may have to remove that shield there okay now before i remove the four bolts that hold the caliper to the bracket and to the car here I am going to remove my brake line right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my ratchet and remove that. Again, I'm gonna have a rag ready because brake fluid is gonna go everywhere. And like I said, I'm wanting to take these calipers completely off so I can get full access to them. Okay, I have my funnel right here and my jug ready to catch this brake fluid. I have my rag down here. Let's hope, hope this goes well, here we go. Yep, there comes the brake fluid. Looks like I dropped a crush washer. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this over here. Let's get that started. And I'm just gonna let that drain out for a moment. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. Okay, while the brake fluid is draining in that container over there, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen and then take off the caliper. So these two bolts right here are 12 millimeters, and then the caliper bracket is held on by two 14s. There's one down there, and then one up top back here. All right guys, to further disassemble this caliper so I can clean it, I am going to go ahead and undo the rest of the emergency brake hardware here. So first you have this spring. I'm sure there's more than one way to take off this spring. You can see it right there. But what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to just get a flathead screwdriver and I am going to push on, on this spring to where it will move forward a little bit and I'm going to get it so it's no longer connected to this bracket. Okay, so I have it elevated and I just need to pull this up just like that, disengaged. So now I can take off this spring. There's the spring. Now I'm gonna take off this nut right here so we can get this hinge off right here. I believe this is a 17 millimeter. Got it. Okay, cut off this nut and the washer. So now I believe we should be able to take off this bracket. Yep, there's that bracket right there. All right guys, so now we have my rear caliper sitting in my vise. So the first step into, into taking out this piston, you could use a few different kinds of tools, but this is what I have, so this is what I'm gonna use. This goes in the grooves of the piston right here. You can see it's just gonna fit in here. And for the rear pistons, you have to rotate these counterclockwise and spin these out. These don't just pop out with compressed air like the fronts. So this is what I'm going to use and then eventually this will get in the way because this is, you know, this is a box right here so it's going to get too far up here to where it will catch the part of the caliper right here. So once it gets to that point, it'll be a lot easier to turn. So at that point I can just use my large flathead screwdriver. Okay, so now it has gotten to where I can't go any further. In fact, I'm gonna actually ha gonna have to back it off just a little bit so I can get this out. Now at this point, I'm just gonna take my flathead screwdriver and carefully rotate this out. You can see that the seal right here is starting to come out. 
Just keep turning little by little. Okay, there goes the seal, it's coming off. Looks like it's out. So now I can just And there you go. There is the piston. Let's take a closer look at it. Okay, so here is my piston. As you can see, it's not too bad. There is a little bit of gunk in there, but that's okay. I'm just going to take my microfiber cloth and clean that up. I will clean off this grease off the piston. I already did the other side and it had no pitting in it, so that's good. So that means that I can reuse these pistons right here. And here is the boot. The other boot on the other side was not tore at all, and it doesn't look like this one is tore either. So I'm going to go ahead and just take this out, just like that. You can see there's no tears. I mean, it's dirty, but I mean, it's, it's pretty old and has 152,000 miles on it, so that's actually not too bad. Okay, I'm going to try to get this seal out. There we go. Easy as that. This one isn't even too brittle or anything. It's really not in that bad a condition. In the meantime, I am going to sand down these calipers, clean them up real good, and then I'm going to paint them. I'm thinking I'm gonna make that a separate video, so if you want to, uh, look down in the description. Be sure to tune in for that one. Okay. Oh yeah, see, you can see right there, the piston is perfectly fine. Pretty much no pitting, it's in great shape, just gonna clean it up real good.